Hello! Today we are going to be discussing how to create an amortization table for bonds that were sold at a premium using the straight line method. The problem says, on January 1st, 2020, Ellison Enterprises issued $100,000 of 10% seven-year bonds. The bonds pay interest semi-annually on June 30th and December 31st. The market rate of interest on the date of issuance was 8%. The bonds were sold at a price of $110,563.12. We are asked in part one to prepare an amortization table using the straight line method for the first two years of the bond's life, and we need to round all calculations to two decimals. Now if we look a little bit closer, we'll see that these bonds pay interest semi-annually, meaning twice a year, and we have to prepare the amortization table for the first two years of the bond's life. So in total, that's going to make four interest payments that we have to record. And that's going to be these four rows in the table right here. Now we also have a row up here for the issuance of the bond. And since there's no interest payment on the issue date, we're not going to have to fill out the first three columns of the table. But we do have to fill out the balance of the premium and the carrying value for the initial date. So the initial balance of the premium we can find by taking the selling price, which is $110,563.12. And then we can subtract the power value, which is $100,000. And that gives us an initial balance of the premium of $10,563.12. Now the initial carrying value is just going to be the same thing as the selling price. So we're going to put down $110,563.12. The next thing we can do is calculate the interest payment for the interest paid column. And the way we do that is by taking the power value, which is $100,000 multiply by the contract rate, which is listed right with the par value of 10%, or 0 0.10, and then divide by 2, since these are semi-annual bonds. And if we do that calculation, we will get a $5,000 interest payment. And that's going to be the same for each of the different interest payments, so we can drag that number down. So the next column is interest expense. And you might be wondering, why should the interest expense be any different than the interest paid? And that's a question we're going to explore using this picture that I've created. So this picture describes the life of the bond. So up front, the company is borrowing $110,563.12, and then they're going to be making 14 interest payments, since this is a seven-year bond, and it pays interest semi-annually, and each payment is for $5,000. So we have payment one, payment two, and then just for sake of screen space here, we also have payments three through 12, which are just being represented by this dot, dot, dot here. We have interest payment 13, and then finally, interest payment 14. And we also have the principal repayment, which is the par value of the bond of $100,000. Now, I think of the interest expense as coming from two different places. Firstly, we have the interest payments. That is included in the interest expense, these 14 payments. But we also have the difference between the selling price of the bond and the principal repayment. So if you think about this, the company is borrowing $110,563.12, yet they only have to pay back $100,000 at the end of the bond's life, so a lower amount. So you can kind of think of that as a savings on the interest. So this is represented by the premium, which is the difference between those two numbers. So this premium really is a reduction in the interest expense for the company. So if there was no premium at all, then the interest payment would be the same as the interest expense. But since we did have a premium, it's going to have to decrease our interest expense by a little bit for each of these different payments. So the way we're going to do this with the straight line method, which is the focus of this video, is we're going to split this $10,563.12 up equally into each of the different 14 interest payments. And you'll see how that works in just a moment as we complete this table. So this column, the premium amortization, is going to represent how much of the balance of the premium we're using up each period, or how much we are reducing the interest expense by each period. And since we're using the straight line method, we're going to have to equally divvy up this number to each of the 14 interest payments. Remember, there's 14 interest payments because these are seven-year bonds. So since they're seven-year bonds and they pay interest semi-annually, that's going to be 14 interest payments. So what we do is we take the balance of the premium, and we divide that by 14. And if we round to two decimals, we get the premium amortization of $754.51. And that's going to be the same for each of the interest payments. Now, if we continue with our thinking of the premium as a reduction in the interest expense, 
The interest expense starts with the interest paid, so we'll start with $5,000, and then we can subtract the premium amortization, because that's the reduction in our interest expense. So we get our interest expense to be $4,245.49 if we round to two decimals, and that's going to be the same for each payment. So next for the balance of the premium, keep in mind that this premium balance is going to be decreased by the premium amortization of each period. So what we can do is we can take the previous balance and we can subtract the premium amortization. And that will give us a new balance of the premium for each period. And we can do the same thing for the next period. Take the previous balance and subtract the premium amortization. And we continue to do that for all of the different rows. We can follow a similar process for the carrying value. Take the carrying value in the previous period and subtract the premium amortization. And the same thing for the remaining rows. Take the carrying value in the previous period and subtract the premium amortization. Now there's one other way that you could find the carrying value and that would be by taking the par value, which is $100,000, and adding whatever the balance of the premium is. So just taking, let's say for example, 630, 2021, if we took $100,000 and we added the balance of the premium, $8,299.59, we would get this carrying value right here. And one way to kind of check yourself in these last two columns is to see if they're approaching the right value. And what do I mean by that? Well, if we look at the balance of the premium, at the end of the bond's life, this should approach the value of zero. And we can see it seems to be approaching that. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And maybe after 14 interest payments, this seems like maybe it would be down to zero. And looking at the carrying value, that should be approaching $100,000, since that is the par value. So we can see here it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Looks like it will be approaching $100,000 if we were to fill out the 14 payments of this table. All right, we are finished with the amortization table. So there's just one more part if we were to zoom out here really quick. We need to record the journal entry for the second interest payment. And we're going to do that with this journal paper that I have over here. So since we need to record the journal entry for the second interest payment, we need to find the row related to the second interest payment in our table. Now remember the first row was just for the issuance of the bonds when there was no payment at all. So this is the first payment on 6-30-2020 and the second payment is going to be on 12-31-2020. So we're going to be using the first three columns of the table in order to create our journal entry. So first, let's look at the interest paid. The interest paid is $5,000. And whenever we're paying out something, that suggests that we have cash involved. And if we're paying out cash, that means we're using cash, meaning we have to credit our cash account. And that's going to be in the amount of $5,000. Next, we have the interest expense. And that's going to be for $4,245.49. And we know that interest expense is an expense, so it's going to increase with a debit. So we'll debit our interest expense for $4,245.49. Finally, we have this premium amortization column. And this is going to be represented by the account called premium on bonds payable, which has a normal credit balance. And each of these entries here in the table is going to represent a debit. And you probably could have figured that out based on the numbers in the journal entry. We need a debit to balance the journal entry. So we're going to debit the premium on bonds payable account. And that's going to be for $754.51. All right, we are finished with the journal entry and therefore finished with this problem. Now there's one last thing that I want to note here. And remember that this question, part two, asks us to record the journal entry for the second interest payment. Well, you might notice that every journal entry that we did, whether it be the first journal entry, the third journal entry, second journal entry, the journal entry would actually look exactly the same. And that's because the first three columns of the table is the same for every payment. Now that's always going to be the case if you're doing the straight line method, but if you're using the effective interest amortization method, then that will not be true. So make sure to keep that in mind as you are completing your problems.